President Mohamed Buhari has finally addressed Nigerians on the coronavirus pandemic, announces cessation of movement, and several sources are saying very different things concerning the course of the explosion that rocked the understate capital, Akure. Which should we believe? This is PLOS Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. Now, in a bid to curb the spread of the coronavirus in the country, President Muhammad Buhari has announced that the capital, the state capital, Lagos and Ogun states will be on lockdown. The president made the announcement in a nationwide address on Sunday night. There are discerning voices on the legality of his directive. Before we bring our guest, let's take a little sneak peek at the address from last night. Nigerians, from the first signs that coronavirus or COVID-19 was turning into an epidemic and was officially declared a worldwide emergency of all Nigerians. Since his return, the NCDC has been implementing numerous strategies and programs in Nigeria to ensure that the adverse impact of this virus on our country is minimized. We ask all Nigerians to support the work the Federal Ministry of Health and NCDC are doing, led by the Presidential Task Force. Although we have adopted strategies used globally, our implementation programs have been tailored to reflect our local realities. In Nigeria, we are taking a two-step approach. First, to protect the lives of our fellow Nigerians and residents living here, and second, to preserve the livelihoods of workers and business owners to ensure their families get through this very difficult time in dignity and with hope and peace of mind. To date, we have introduced health care measures, border security, fiscal and monetary policies in our response. We shall continue to do so as the situation unfolds. Some of these measures will surely cause major inconveniences to many citizens, but these are sacrifices we should all be willing and ready to make for the greater good of our country. In Nigeria's fight against COVID-19, there is no such thing as an overreaction or an un-Nigerians. From the first signs that coronavirus or COVID-19 was turning into an epidemic and was officially declared a worldwide emergency of all Nigerians. Since his return, the NCDC has been implementing numerous strategies and programs in Nigeria to ensure that the adverse impact of this virus on our country is minimized. We ask all Nigerians to support the work the Federal Ministry of Health and NCDC are doing, led by the Presidential Task Force. Although we have adopted strategies used globally, our implementation programs have been tailored to reflect our local realities. In Nigeria, we are taking a two-step approach. First, to protect the lives of our fellow Nigerians and residents living here, and second, to preserve the livelihoods of workers and business owners to ensure their families get through this very difficult time in dignity and with hope and peace of mind. To date, we have introduced health care measures, border security, fiscal and monetary policies in our response. We shall continue to do so as the situation unfolds. Some of these measures will surely cause major inconveniences 
to many citizens. But these are sacrifices we should all be willing and ready to make for the greater good of our country. In Nigeria's fight against COVID-19, there is no such thing as an overreaction or an to protect the citizenry, President Muhammad Buhari has rolled out a number of instructions, directives, plans and strategies. To have a conversation with me on this via telephone is journalist Dipo Olayoku. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. All right. Good evening. How are you? I am very good. And you? Uh, I'm good, I'm good. How are you managing with the stay-at-home plans? Do you have all you need stocked up? Uh, we, are, we are going to, we are putting our own after 11 today. We have been going to the office since that time anyway. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's... I have, um... All right. Uh, yes. All right. Let's start the conversation by looking at the part that a lot of persons say sounds very strong and very confident and that's what he said about having the whole instrument of government mobilized to confront what has now become both a health emergency and an economic crisis how reassuring is this for you knowing in another four hours lagos abuja and ugu will be on lockdown I, I, I think what is the most important thing is the cooperation of the people. Because what we are talking about is like the president said between life and death. And perhaps there's a need for us to take a peep into what is happening in other countries. Maybe that will tell us why it has become very necessary for us to make sure we don't allow such a thing to happen in Nigeria. This is because Nigeria does not have what it takes to confront it and do not exactly especially what is happening in America, in Italy, in Spain. So the only thing we need to do is to make sure we don't get to that level. And that is why it is not more about what the president said or what the government wants to do. It is more about the people. How do we make sure that this thing does not spread. I think that is the most important thing. And that is the duty we owe ourselves and the coming generation. If you say that's the most important thing at this time, what do you then make of the arguments uh, that even in an emergency, there is need to follow the law? I have read and watched some senior advocates repeat this uh, in, in the past uh, 12 hours or so. They are worried that might we be opening up the possibility of a dictatorship in the future as some fears without the necessary laws? I think we look at it from two perspectives. I think the, the perspective of the law. The president, to my own understanding, has not breached any law. Because even the condition gives the president the right or the power to declare it, and then if the National Assembly is in session, it should inform them within two days. Or if they are not in session, it should inform them in 10 days, so that they can quickly reconvene. So the power is there for the government president to do it, and then inform National Assembly. But the president must wait for the National Assembly, because those who drafted the Constitution, perhaps have the foresight that we could have a situation that will um, involve the president taking immediate action. I think that is the most important thing. Then, two, let us talk about necessity. That is not talking about law. I remembered when the issue of late Musaya Adua came up, and then there was going to be what they call functional crisis. National Assembly came up with what they call the doctrine of necessity to save an imminent danger. So, both ways, I don't think the president cared. And then we were not any court of law that anybody could come and declare the action of the president or the government to avoid. It is only the court of law that can do that. But we are talking of life and death. We are talking of how do we make sure that we don't get to the level of Italy. I think Nigerians should watch the Italian prime minister address his people. The man was almost weeping on air. He said they have done what we think that needed to be done. And they seem to have been defeated by this thing. That they are looking up to the sky. 
You shouldn't get to that level. In America today, there are over 120,000 people that have tested positive. And they have recorded over 2,000 deaths. Like they used to say in the jungle that they always play. This, thing, this virus doesn't have legs. This virus doesn't have arms. It can only move to another person through one person. I think that is the most important thing that everybody should be talking about. It is not about the legalists now, it's all about the law. Because this thing doesn't affect anybody's life that, okay, the law is going to kill people. The law, law is made for man and not man for law. And any law that cannot protect its citizens, it is no law. I think those are the areas that Nigeria should be considering. We should not be talking about law now. What are we talking? We're talking about life and death. As our people are beginning to quote law, has it's very very saying restriction. And interestingly, these same people that are now quoting law were the people that were calling the president to take action that time. I, I don't know what you want in this country. But to some of us, what matters to us is life and death. The duty of a government under Section 22 is how to protect life and then how to ensure um, welfare. I think that should be the most important thing. Because no government will sit idly and watch what is happening in Italy, what is happening in America, and then pray for its people. We don't want it here. So it is teaching time saves now, obviously. I think that should be our most important thing. As the duty of the law, uh, like uh, some people have said, if you are not com if you are not comfortable with the actual president action, that is why we don't have the court of appeal there. Go to the court. Interestingly, the court themselves are on recess because of this coronavirus. That is the irony of the situation. No, all right. I would love to take you up on more angles to that conversation, but there's so much for us to cover that I'll just let it slide and go look at the optimism. There's been a lot of, you know, news that a vaccine is in the offing, uh, that it might be found in another uh, week or so. And thus, this whole lockdown that has been uh, directed by the president will be over before we know it. On a scale, how optimistic are you? It is not a matter of being optimistic now. It's just a matter of being uh, our faith, what it can carry. Are you getting my point? Because as of today, nobody knows the number of Nigerians that have been infected. We are only talking about 111, 111 so because of the people that have been tested. There are a lot of people outside that are not being tested, instead of tested, but are carrying this thing. So I, I think the optimism is something we live in the realm of faith. What is very, very important is, you know, we are not conducting much tests. As ah, today, according to the DG of NC this year, I think they are going to about 2,000 plus tests. Uh, hey, and then you cannot compare ourselves with America that can do 50,000 tests. But the most important thing is that those ones that are already carrying it that we have not discovered, how do we make sure they don't go about spreading it? I think that is the most important thing. Because I will never, be, I won't believe that there are only 150 or 120 Nigerians that are carrying this thing. Like I said, tests have not been conducted around. A lot of people have been, like uh, the governor of Lagos itself, they are still trying to treat about 4,000 people. How many, do we know how many people will be carrying this thing among the 4,000 we are looking for? So I, I think what is very, very important is optimism. Uh, that's why the president said this uh, restriction is 14 days in the first instance. That if everything has improved before the end of 14 days, then there will be no need for them to extend it. But if not, then there is which I just respect. But I just pray that we'll be able to cover the ground in the next two weeks so that we won't need to extend restrictions. Because my dear sister, it's going to require a lot of sacrifice on the part of Nigerians. Nigerians, we know, so some people that only like, depend on when they go out daily that they can get what they will eat. So this, that means in the next 14 days, it's going to be very, very tough for them. Uh, so I the think that should be the part the, of the, the president Nigeria and um, not the law. Dipo, How the, do we as the state complain? Uh, Dipo, so I, I want to interject so that you don't lose your train of thought on that particular issue. The president has said that uh, palliatives have been set up for these people who live in the suburbs, that relief material will be sent to them within the week. And as of this evening, um, I, I was seeing uh, some messages being shared on uh, a women's uh, journalist group that I belong um, of women that are getting the messages, old people in the suburb, telling them that they've been chosen for the relief um, from the government. Doesn't that, you know, give you some sort of confidence that, yes, there will be a lot of sacrifices, but the government is ready for the task? Uh, yes, there is no matter the good impression that the government might have. 
except we want to defend ourselves. Some people might will definitely want to take advantage of the situation. So if you think all the vulnerables, all the tragedy people will get succor, I think we'll be living in a false paradise. A lot of people, will, not because the government didn't want it to get to them, but because of the nature and the character of some Nigerian officials. Some people will not get what is due to them. We know what we are talking about. So if you think all the vulnerable will get it, even if the government releases for all the vulnerable, because of what we are, because of who we are, it is not possible that it will get to everybody. We just pray that God will touch the heart of those who will be in charge of this thing, that they will think good for the greatest number of Nigerians. I think that is very, very necessary. Yes, the government can come up with very good intentions. The government can lay up the, the good plans. But who are the people that will implement? I, I will sure that they will have the interest of the masses at heart. But we just have to appeal to government to look at the means of getting this across to people. For example, look at what the Labour State government is doing now. It's on palliative. Already, complaints are coming up. People said some party officers have tried that kid, which will not be out of place anyway, because we know all our people. So I, I think we should only appeal to government and appeal to those who will be in charge that they should allow humanity to touch their heart so that Nigerians should not be made to suffer a double jeopardy. Double the problem of staying at home and then the problem of not getting palliative or the succor that the government has put them, by that I will promise them, we will not deny them of this thing. It's not going to be an easy thing for someone to remain indoors for two weeks when you are not sick. So uh, it, it, that one itself is an issue. Just okay. like uh, we were discussing yesterday, we said the issue of this uh, coronavirus, even when, uh, when somebody tests positive, I get to my point. It is not the coronavirus that is the issue. It is the, it is the, it is the isolation of quarantine that is the issue. You will not have the movement to the free movement. You will not have the freedom to go out. Even though your people will not come to see you, the doctors that will see you are just like that. The president has that said these are Dipo. The president yes. has said. I mean, he didn't mean words when he said that a lot of sacrifices will be needed on our part. And every Nigerian, uh, with the exclusion maybe of those in the really remote areas, are aware that this is a global pandemic. Um, let's look at it from this perspective, right? The president said that, let me quote what he said. He said, although we have adopted strategies, use, strategies rather, used globally, our implementation programs have been tailored to reflect our local realities. That's um, a, a, an excerpt from um, his uh, statement yesterday. But skeptics yes. are saying that there is no difference from what the rest of the world is doing that has been modified in recognition of our unique environment. What could these be that are local that we cannot seem to see that have adopted for our environment. Uh, then that, that one will have to come from the implementation because we have not seen the implementation is not started. And then don't forget that uh, in the case of the other lockdown, we saw the picture of no movement at all. But in this fact, the, the president has suggested some people. Are you aware? Like uh, the yes, of course, the media house, the hospitals. Yes. The second, the second to the federal government, the government of the Federation and the chairman of the presidential task force came up with another release that bankers have been exempted though they were facing selectively. In other lands, where they have this total shutdown, we don't see anybody outside. So I think that the woman did that's what the president meant when he said it has been tailored to suit our local popularities. Because a lot of people have been exempted. Because when you look at the case of uh, Italy or the, uh, the case of Spain, we are not seeing people outside. So that but from tomorrow, we will be seeing a lot of people outside, like people in the distributed industry, people in the food industry and stuff like that. Like I said, let us wait for the implementation, then we will know whether there is any difference between what we are witnessing elsewhere and what we are going to practice here. But what is very, very important, which, we should, which is very damning, we should be telling our people, let us try to obey this simple instruction. It is for our own good. If you are not among the categories of people that have been allowed to come out, Please don't come out. Let us stay indoors. So that at least we are not allowed this thing to move around. This thing cannot move on its own. 
If we don't move, these things cannot move. I think that is very, very important. Only those categories of that have been accepted should be seen outside. I think that is very, very important. Okay, talking about enforcement, um, a lot of the, the, the government said that they are going to certainly enforce it. Can you hear me? I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay, so the, the government has said enforcement will be carried out. We, we saw um, in India some enforcement yes. officers flogging yes. those who went against the coffee there. Do you see a situation where we might get to that point? Because really, right now, you can't arrest anybody to, in the true sense of the word. That's why we, it's an appeal. We saw even in uh, South Africa, where they were using uh, rubber bullets to chase people away. The tendency is that people want to kill some people who are out of um, uh, surveillance, some people out of adventure may want to come out. Some people want to come out out of necessity. Are you getting my point? And that is why it is very necessary for the government to do the need to. Point that nobody will be forced to come out of, out of necessity. Because when hunger is dragging somebody out, they can stop Dikwa, the line is breaking. Dikwa. Can get it, yes? The line is breaking, uh, but, but I need to get your thoughts on this before we leave uh, this um, uh, part of the show. Okay. Um, there's still a seeming unclarity about um, the strategies as it were, uh, but when we talk about the monetary aspect of it, Seraph at some point came out to say that these monies that are being donated, um, announced, ordered to be released, there doesn't seem to be accountability. How worried are you? that this might become um, an issue. There is life after coronavirus, of course. Uh, that's the, where the question lies. Which money has been released now? The government said, the prime minister said they should release 10 billion naira to the uh, Lagos State government. You, you want me to start to counting? Dan Gote has it, released money. Uh, um, Alakija has released money. We have prominent Nigerians releasing billions of naira for this effort. Who is coordinating? The National Assembly, they are saying they are slashing their salaries. They are going to donate the money. You know, from all over, monies are coming into this country for this effort. You, you, you know, he that too. But donations and awards have been going to the National Center for Disease Control. That was why the president in his speech yesterday said that this money has to be centralized. And he has now centralized it and put it under the uh, presidential task force on Corona. And you see, as far as when people say uh, this money should be distributed and shared, the money is not for palliative. The money is to combat coronavirus. I watched the, I listened to the DDG of MCDC. It is not for money, it is not money to be shared among the vulnerable. It is money that will be used to fight the disease. Corona I was at the MCDC office in Lagos today. I saw people were building things. As even as small as by, by bottles of water. And the DG of NCD said they won't, they won't even want money. They will have got people to come to them and say, okay, what are the things you guys need? If it is a uh, mask that you need, okay, we are going to provide this. If it is ICU, that we will okay, provide ICU for you. The man said they don't even need money. What they need are the things that they are to give you for. So the issue of uh, accountability has not really arisen now because how many people have been released the money? Right. Are we sure the money is even, is even in the copper? We spoke with the people in the executive of the government office today. Right, I'm really sorry I have to interject again because we're out of time. I'm really sorry I keep interrupting you. Thank you so much for your time with us today. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. All right. You take care now, sir. Take, take care, yes. Okay, we'll go on a short break. And when we return, what really caused the explosion in Ondo State? Don't go away.